Oh, hey, Professor Landnut here. Hope you're all doing well. So it's October here in New England, and you know what that means. Time for raking. It's not a bad chore. I, I kind of enjoy it for the most part. But this is also a power tools video, so you know what that means. So let's look at another awesome Carlson power tool. Okay, so for this edition of power tools, I'd like to introduce you to two uh, very interesting tools um, that I think will be useful. I'm gonna blast through them. I've got about eight minutes to keep this under 10. So here we go. The first one is Carlson point cloud software. What I wanted to show you here and I'm going to fire up the point cloud software. I'm going to go ahead and create a new point cloud project. We'll call this take two. Uh, we should call it take five since it's the, uh, in honor of uh, Brubeck and since this is the fifth power tool. So we'll call it take five. And I'm going to right click and import a uh, cloud. And the one I'm going to use is this one. And what I want you to see when I do that, this is a LiDAR data set. And it's going to analyze it, and it's going to give me the projection and ask if I want to change anything here. I'm going to take the defaults. But this is the thing I wanted to show you. This LiDAR is classified. It has classifications. This is huge. So I say, yes, take them all and add them as what Carlson Point Cloud calls regions. They came up with a different name for classifications. I'm not exactly sure why, but they're called regions in Carlson Point Cloud. So it brings in the cloud, um, creates a point cloud in Carlson. But, but what's most critical here is that it has taken the classifications and made them into regions. So as soon as it's done with this cloud, converting classifications to regions, and then if I right click and show you the properties, this is about, uh, what, 18 million points. If I double click and create a scene, um, doesn't really matter which one we use, a uh, simple um, direct is fine. And because it's LiDAR, there's no color here. So I'll tell you what, I'll do it this way. I'll double click and use position elevation. LiDAR doesn't have colors um, like a drone photo stuff does, but this is by elevation. But again, what you'll see here, the main thing is you'll see tons of trees. But if I go to the scene and I scroll down to this secret squirrel spot, here are the regions that were created. It says hide or select. So if I say hide, as I go down the list of low vegetation, high vegetation, etc., you'll see the view changing. And what's left automatically is bare earth, basically. All that's left is the ground classified points, automatically done. That's incredible. Now, we do have, of course, bare earth functionality that we can uh, process with. But in this case, we don't have to. So we come in here. Now I'm just going to basically say, OK, select the ground. And again, I could take part of this if I wanted to or whatever. And then I just come over here to Actions, and I say Create a Tin. Okay? And this is basically a way to very quickly use LiDAR data, if it's classified, to do some special things. Most importantly, in this case, is to create a, 
uh, 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 essentially a bare earth ground tin from uh, a, a LIDAR um, that has uh, lots of other data. Okay, so now back in the drawing, we've got that surface and I've contoured it over here. And then I've drawn just this shape where I want to do some grading. I want to grade out this area. So what we're going to use in uh, Carlson Civil and Survey, although they're a little different, I'll show you, um, but in Civil right now, is Design Pad Template. And we're going to tell it, uh, we're going to target a surface file. If it's closed, which it is, it's to the outside. We're going to go at a ratio, different colors for cut and fill. There's quite a few prompts here, um, settings to work with. And we're going to take most of the defaults, and notice all the geometry is going to go to the pad layer. We're going to pick the pad polyline, which is the area that it's going to project from. And we're going to project to our take five tin, which is that existing surface that we did. We say if it's a fill, go three to one. If it's a cut, go two, four to one. And what it does is because this was drawn at zero, it looks and says, I'm sampling the surface. I'm getting between 8127 and 9178 elevations going around. What elevation do you want to start at? So I'm going to split the difference and go with 86. It sets it at 86. It projects a cut slope where it's a cut and a fill slope where it's a fill, of course, and gives me a volume. Okay, and that's the first pass. But now it says, do you want to change anything? Do you want to adjust? I'm going to say no, and I'm not going to create a new surface or update the target surface. I'm going to say no, don't do anything. Contour it, I'm going to say no. Now, in Carlson's survey, that's as far as you can go. You can say, I do want to change it and try and change things. But in Carlson's civil, um, you have another tool, which is the editor. So if I double click, I just double click on this object, this pad template. It shows me the cut and fill slopes and the elevation. I can do all sorts of things from here. I can move it, just pick it up and move it and tell it to reprocess. And I'll get new information. Now I have these cut and fill volumes. Obviously the cut is very heavy. Okay, so let's raise it up. We'll go from 86. Let's go to 90 and see what happens. It reprocesses, and now we're very heavy on the fill. So let's say we go to 88, split the difference there, and we'll see that we're coming in much closer. Okay, we can change elevations of vertices. We can move vertices. We can move the whole thing. We can rotate the whole thing into a new position. You can do any sort of editing that you need to do. And one of the options here, which is interesting, is to balance it. So I say balance it within 10 cubic meters, um, and it basically adjusts up and down until it balances the volumes, which it's done at 87.39, and um, I've got that. So this is an introduction to a very powerful grading tool called a pad template and the editor in Civil, and uh, this really can uh, really help you build surfaces very quickly edit them very easily. And then, of course, in the end, you can write a tin and you can say, okay, I want to export this as, um, you know, site one as a new tin. And then we can exit from here and we have a new tin. We can take a look at it, view, 3D view, surface file, and we'll look at uh, site one. This is, the, this is the surface that we just constructed with that tool. And you can see the cut and fill areas and so on and so forth. Um, I'll say uh, color by elevation none and you can just see a little bit better there. So I wanted to introduce you to two things very quickly. There's a lot more and maybe I'll revisit the pad template and show you some more of the options next time. But I wanted to introduce you to that power tool and I also wanted to introduce you to the idea of using classifications in LiDAR to build ground surfaces in Point Cloud. I hope those were helpful, and we'll see you next time.